Hey, this is Maggie. And Ashley. And you're listening to The Watering Hole, a place where animals and animal enthusiasts regularly drink. Every episode, we'll talk about different animals and why they're cool, from basic biology to the threats they face and what people are doing about it, all while under the influence. Okay, you can stop pouring. What? She's gonna take all the wine. It's not that much. All right. <laughs> so we've got an episode in store for you. <laughs> we sure do, folks. Oh, oh, oh. Um, also, does my shirt look like a, make me look like a pirate? Mm. It didn't until just now. Okay. Like I saw you wear this shirt all day. Yeah. Right now the sleeves look heavy. You know what? Um, they are filled with concrete. Oh, wow. <laughs> what an interesting It's a new way choice. to, yes, it's a new way feels to very build new, arm muscle. Oh, it feels very New York Fashion Week. Yeah, so. yeah, slash pirate. pirate. Okay, great, 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 also great. Also very New York I'll Fashion never week. forget, I had this nice silky blouse that I wore to the office that we shared with Steve, and he said that I looked like a fancy pirate, and I could never wear that shirt again. <laughs> See, I would take that as as someone who wanted to be a pirate so bad growing up. Yeah. I would take it as the biggest compliment. Yeah, it just wasn't what I was going not, for. That is you true. Know, when it is seven not years what ago. You're going for it's when so I was, upsetting. You know, still trying to impress people. <laughs> <laughs> Pirates impressive, if you mm -hmm. ask me. Oh well, yeah. Do you know how I started my morning? Well, you just told me that you have a new morning routine before we started recording, so I could guess. <laughs> But I bet it's not that. It's not that. Okay. The more routine is not that interesting, but if you're interested, uh, let me know in the comments below. <laughs> but no, I was like ready to go, like had my jacket on. And the night before, I had left Ollie alone and Ollie likes to counter surf and eat anything he can. Oh. So I always have to hide food. I Ollie proof yeah. the house. And so I still had the cup left over. Maggie and I went out for New Year's and had a cup of M&M's. And I still had that cup of M&M's. Oh my God, you brought that all the way home? Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. So I had this cup of M&M's, just like a little like cocktail cup. Yeah. And then I also had, I had a box of Nerds, the candy. Yeah, yeah. That I was snacking on yesterday. <laughs> you know what I love? A good old box of Nerds. Box of Nerds. Usually biologists. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Um, but no, like a, a box of nerds with like the two sides where you yeah, get, yeah. mix the flavors. Mm -hmm. They're very old, but I was, but they're sugar. So I was eating them yesterday. And so when I had to leave, I put the nerds in the cup and I put it up in my pantry so that Ollie couldn't get to it. And then when I opened the cupboard this morning to grab something for lunch, it spilled everywhere. You forgot you had put it up there. And, but, and it had like moved oh. or my pantry is very full. Um, and so right before I left for work, there were... M&Ms and nerds and those things move. nerds bounce they bounce so much they're also round whereas like an M&M is at least the, all kind of, of flat some of the M&Ms shattered <laughs> <laughs> they weren't that far up they shattered 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 it was a thin candy shell but if you want some nerds I still have the whole thing didn't spill but those things spread wow look at that I feel like you're gonna be finding nerds oh I for found months. I did I did another check and I found an M&M that I'd snuck under a cupboard before wow, you came look over. Look at that. That was thorough. Well yeah. done. But yeah, so uh, I tend to spill things a lot. Yeah. I did I did just like literally last week tell our coworker about uh, how I opened a thing of ramen and the noodles went everywhere. Oh, that is like the perpetual <gasps> thing of opening bags that just this happens with me and dog treats often, much to Argos's pleasure. Yeah. But like I I don't know. They say like open here, tear here, and they're not actually made to no, no. to open that way. Just get scissors. Also, uh, cereal boxes oh. like those are really. I struggle. You are weak. We didn't realize that earlier today when you're trying to open a bottle of wine. I was trying to open it aesthetically, like you know those videos that are like Mercedes, and then they just. Haven't you seen these videos on Instagram? Are you talking about a commercial? The commercials that are that they're making parodies of where they're like oh. where they're like Bentley. <laughs> and then they like No, I hate ASMR. I hate ASMR. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
And so they like do things that look, it's just stupid. Nobody touches their car that way. <laughs> so here I am trying to open the wine bottle with using just my pointer finger and my thumb. Ah, that and was the issue. That was not how you open a wine bottle. <laughs> just don't do it. It's not worth it. No. And then your friend will make fun of you for it. But then you'll drink the wine and record a podcast. Bentley. <laughs> can, I, can I say that again? Subaru. <laughs> that is how, why we bought our Subarus, because of a commercial just like that. All right. Do you have an animal for us today? I do. Or I do not? indeed. Do you want to hear about it? Heck yeah, I do. All right. I think our audience does too. They probably do. They're like, nobody cares about the other stuff. No, so, that is uh, very true. So I do have an animal for you. Good. And I have a hint. And then if you can't get that hint, I have a, another that will really help. But the first one might not actually help. The, might, the first one might be pretty difficult. All right, all right. Unless you're somehow on the same wavelength. Okay, so this delicate predator is an aggressive mimic. This delicate predator predator is an aggressive mimic. Is an aggressive mimic. Delicate. I feel like it's like some kind of like praying mantis. You're close. <gasps> stick. <laughs> Sorry. Like a stick bug. No. <laughs> Just a stick. I did it. Just a stick. stick. <laughs> Today I'm here to tell you about the stick. <laughs> they evolved thousands of years ago. <laughs> Only thousands. <laughs> stick. Stick. <laughs> okay, but praying mantis was like kind of close? It was very close. So it's an insect. Mm-hmm. It's not a stick bug. It's not a stick or a stick bug. It's not a praying mantis. Is it a... <laughs> That's also what I was going to say. Also not it. Is it a <clears throat> predator? Is it some kind of wasp? No. Uh, is it some kind of ant? No. Beetle? No. Spider? Mm -mm. What the fuck? Would you like the follow up? Yeah. This delicate predator is an aggressive mimic who isn't religious like its well-known green cousin. Isn't it religious? You just said this animal. You, you said praying mantis. Oh! So this one is well, not religious like its well-known green cousin. It's just a mantis. What kind? Shrimp. No, man, it's not a mantis shrimp, no. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Do you think I know of my mantises? Maybe. You know a lot of things. Aggressive mantis. No. Bully mantis. No. You're probably not going to get it at this point. Yeah, I'm uh... <laughs> Okay, ready? Yes, I'm so ready. I'm doing the orchid mantis. Oh, I do know this one. I don't think I would have guessed it. Yeah, but that's fine. That's fine. Still very cool. Also known as the walking flower mantis, orchid blossom, mantid, and the pink orchid mantis. Okay, I was really close in the beginning. I know. I thought you stick were going to get it. Stick was far away, but uh, <laughs> after <laughs> stick, stick bug, after closer. stick, you got you got closer. Yeah, as soon as you said so, like a mantis, I was like, yeah, you're, you're right there. Right there, right at the finish line. Woo! And then you turned around and went back and to the And then I ran away. I got scared. <laughs> yeah. What's new? <laughs> okay, so the basics. Um, when it was first discovered, and I want to point out, because the research I was doing was like, it was first discovered in 18-something. And I was like, you know what? I bet you some indigenous people discovered it before. Long time ago. It was definitely sure. known about before mm -hmm. some white man was like, I discovered this species. <laughs> anyway. So... It was, when it was first discovered, it was this Australian explorer, and he had observed a flower eating insects. So it, its mimicry is so good that it fooled a human, in other words. Nice. Um, it is a white and light pink colored mantis. So if you do know its well-known green cousin, the praying mantis, mm -hmm. you imagine a pink and white version of that, a mostly white with some, like, pink hues but it, it mimics an orchid flower that's where it exactly gets its name the four walking legs resemble flower petals and oh. then the toothed front pair that it uses to catch its prey i think they're like still also kind of pinkish you know just imagine flower. a flower that's walking around yeah mm -hmm. 
Um, it can change its color from pink uh, to brown, Ooh. depending on the color of its background. Nice. Which is very cool. I don't know. I remember, we, I think we talked about this last episode, but we were talking about all the colors that some species might see that we don't see. Yeah. So when I read this, that it can change color from pink to brown, I was like, those are the only colors that we've identified it changing to. What if it's changing to other colors yeah. that we just don't even know exist? Very cool. Anyway, so where is it found? It's found in the rainforests of Southeast Asia. So everywhere from Cambodia down to Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Thailand, Vietnam, and the Philippines. So it's all over the place. Dang. Southeast Asia, where beautiful orchid flowers are found. Mm -hmm. Helpful, very helpful. So why are they aggressive mimics? And this is actually a, a term used in mimicry. So I guess question. Yeah. Are they aggressive and also mimics? Or is the mimicry itself the aggressive aspect? So think of it as like... Like aggressively friendly. It doesn't mean you're necessarily aggressive. It just means like you're, you're overly very... friendly. So neither kind of to answer your question actually. Excellent. Because they're... I'm thinking of it more as a passive versus active voice in in language. So like also how I was thinking about it. <laughs> clearly. So we think of mimicry often in terms of like an owl that can hide in a tree hollow yeah. or lizards that look like the colors of fallen leaves, the viceroy butterfly that mimics a monarch so that it can evade predators or deter predators. So they're all using mimicry to hide. Mm -hmm. This orchid mantis is using mimicry to stand out. So oh. it's the opposite of trying to hide. They are mimicking aggressively to stand out. So maybe it's kind of like you're aggressively friendly, mm -hmm. but I think of it more as like passive is like, oh, we're, we're doing it to kind of just be a little like we're so like behind the scenes. A lot hide. of mimicry is like kind of like camouflage. So mm -hmm. you like blend in your background so no one sees you, but so they want to be seen. Exactly. They want to be seen so that they can catch food. Oh, so that they, cause they want food to come to them. Cause they want like little buggies. Exactly. Can... <laughs> Guys, the pieces, you can see them, hear yeah. them coming together. Exactly. That's my um, puzzle sound. So you just sound I'm like a fastest puzzle maker. You sound like a rodent. I, I do sound very hamster like, and I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> reep, reep, reep. <laughs> That's oh my game God. Because I just listed out a, a, several species that use mimicry to hide, I was curious, like, what are some other species that use mimicry to stand out? Mm -hmm. And there was, it, there was actually a fairly obvious list, and we've mentioned one of them on the podcast before. Can you think of another animal that uses mimicry to stand out to stand out or to catch prey more more explicitly have we done angler fish yeah that was it that was it nailed it uh -huh. we're killing it baby you are that's Woo! so good so angler fish they like dangle the l little bioluminescent little like, looking thing to catch food exactly i watched finding nemo the other day yeah it's so good it's very good. I love Mr. Ray. Oh, so good. Um, I love his song. It's just wonderful. Um, but did you know that Eric Bana is one of the sharks? Oh, I guess he's just, he's the, he's Hector in Troy. Wow. I'm not that old. You never watched Troy with Brad Pitt? Yeah, but like once a long time ago. It was like good-looking men being naked or half naked why wouldn't you watch that oh my god okay <laughs> busy re-watching the mummy what do you want from me because <laughs> you're busy watching brendan fraser i was watching brendan fraser on repeat i oh. didn't have time i had to meet my daily quota oh my god okay so anywho <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> Anglerfish, Ashley nailed the question. Yes. So the orchid mantis, um, it it looks like this, the the straits rhododendron it specifically, if you were to go look that up, it looks very similar because it... Is that the Latin name? No, it's just the type of flower oh, okay. that, that it hunts on okay. or, amongst. But it's, I thought it was like, it was, like a, was that a place? What straits? straits? It's a type of rhododendron. The straight, oh, yeah. straight rhododendron. Yeah. yeah. You there? I do know <laughs> this that is, is a... not a podcast on plants, but you know. <laughs> Listen. I never said the Latin name of this species. No, I've been oh, waiting. Oh, no. It's 
Hymenopus. Ooh. Hymenopus coronatus. Ooh, pretty. Yeah, isn't it? D- delicate little predator. H. coronatus <laughs> shows some of the most pronounced size sexual dimorphism of any species of mantis. Oh, um, so it's one species of orchid mantis. No, I think that is orchid mantis. Orchid mantis is Hymenopus coronatus. Yeah, so it's just one species. Of mantis. Of mantis. I thought you said one species of orchid mantis. Is that the same thing I'm asking? Like, are there different... There, there are mantids. That's yeah. the genus. And this is a species of mantis. But there's not different types of orchid mantises. Correct. Gotcha. There's just one... One orchid mantis. Gotcha. In That's the whole it. world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we got there where was i again <laughs> sorry <laughs> no it's fine i was clarifying i'm glad you, you did the, other people were the straits clarifying. of rhododendron <laughs> the, the straits oh, of magellan if you go on the map that's where we are <laughs> panama canal go for it okay males can be less than half the size of females um this is likely happened because females evolved to support their preferred hunting habits and prey so that they can then protect their clutch of eggs, which they are very um, attentive mm-hmm. mothers up till the eggs hatch and then even sometimes a little after. They make sure that the young mm, are able to move on. <laughs> Ooh, graduate. Like, yeah, it's like, okay, you're good, you're good, everybody's good. Okay, get on out of here. It's not like the eggs start to hatch and she's immediately yeah. leaving well, she the nest. She just leaves eggs and is out Right, there. right. So she, she stays protective. She wants to protective. watch and be like, you did it? All right. Yes. And so that's the suspicion why um, she's likely bigger. She needs to do more. The male is just in it for the breeding. Surprise, surprise. So a study using a spectrometer, which can detect different colors, found that their color is indistinguishable from flowers to pollinators. Dang. So that means even if an orchid mantis is nowhere near a bunch of flowers or orchids, it still looks enough like a flower that, you know, you and me as human eyes, we could probably be like, oh, that has antennas. Oh, it it has legs. Like a pollinator is not going to see that difference. They're just going to see the petals and flowers. This also protects in... um, aids in protecting them from predators so it's just a very evolved form of mimicry again we're very aggressive here what are they eating butterflies as i've kind of alluded to butterflies insects crickets flies beetles bugs bees i don't know what i wrote here (laughs) you just kept going i just can i name all the bugs i know (laughs) just i just wrote i wrote the same thing a lot of different ways (laughs) beetles bugs little critters um what is breeding like this is kind of funny but I mean, not surprising. Did someone bite off somebody else's head? Yes. Yeah, they do. We know what it's like in captivity, so we that's probably what it is in the wild. But I want to read exactly what I read here because it's just funny. Please. The orchid mantis is favored by insect breeders, but it is extremely rare, so it's also extremely expensive. Breeding the mantises is a time-consuming process, as the larger female will try to eat the smaller male once the mating is done. Therefore, the breeder will need to watch the couple throughout the entire process. <laughs> Creepers! A voyeur. Um, so... <laughs> A voyeur. <laughs> So it, it's just, it's weird, but like a lot of insects, she just feasts on him after. Yeah, because um, she needs the food. She does, and that he, makes he her... He got rid of his genetic, the stuff he needed to get rid of. Mm-hmm. His, his lineage will pass on, mm-hmm. and now he's feeding his young with his head. Blech. But then that being said, what I just read, you might have picked up on it. The orchid mantis is sold as like, a not a pet, but like... Uh, a trinket or novelty, something. Excuse me. <laughs> what just that was happened? Gross. That was disgusting. Are you okay? So the orchid mantis is highly not, revered. Yeah, it's like a status symbol, like a lot of oh. things in Southeast Asia. Like, oh, look how fancy you are. You have this really pretty yeah. flower that is actually a bug. You know, but it's like, alive. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. Okay. So that's the biggest threat to orchid mantises right now Ooh. is the pet trade. Um, but otherwise, they are doing just fine but just like a lot of species it shouldn't be captive yeah. it, just leave it out in the wild observe it from afar 
Just look at it. Take yeah. a picture of it. Or Take just a get a regular organ. <laughs> Yeah, just get a fucking flower and be like, if you watch closely, it will move. <laughs> trick your guests. Yeah, trick your guests. Be like, flower flower or mantis? Ooh. Real or cake? Exactly. What is that show? Real or cake? Isn't it? I don't think it is. Cake or fake? Is it cake? Cake or fake? Yeah. Is it is cake? It cake? <laughs> cake or fake would have been a lot better. <laughs> Come on, guys. Get Maggie on these marketing teams. Yeah, right? So there you have it, the Orchid Mantis. <gasps> Very exciting. Yeah. I literally want to do a praying mantis, so I won't do it now, but, um, or maybe, maybe I will. Maybe you will, and we'll just different. learn all about the mantids. And how they're a little bit different. But that's exciting. I love, well, I love orchids, and I love mantids. Now I love orchid mantids. Oh, look at that. New species. All right, you ready? I am ready. Okay. Let's hear it. What's the clue? All right, my clue is it sounds eerie and during the winter can be found on Lake Erie. Oh. Hmm, eerie. Is it a bird? Yep. Okay. Um, is it a... Hmm. Is it a type of duck? Um, it's not a duck. But it's a water bird. Waterfowl? Waterfowl. Okay. Huh. Is it a merganser? No. Hmm. What sounds eerie? It's not, it, it can't be a loon. Is it a loon? Yeah. <laughs> Why couldn't it be a loon? I don't know. <laughs> For those listening to the podcast and not watching, I am wearing my new loon sweatshirt. So I thought it'd be a dead giveaway. <laughs> It can't be a loon. I'm like, fuck, why can't it be a loon? You didn't do loons, did you? No. Um, I realized I didn't check as soon as you said that. No, I I, uh, I just thought, because you said they're found on Lake Erie, so I was under, I was thinking of like what might only be found there. Oh, gotcha. Well, that's why I said during the winter. I mean, you can find them elsewhere during winter too. But for the purpose of the clue, they sound eerie and can be found on Lake Erie. It's a great clue. It's I, a great It was a great clue. Okay. Ready? Right. Tell us about loons. Please. I will. Please. <laughs> please. This is when we found out Ashley is schizophrenic. Mm. So I will be doing, I am doing the common loon, uh, also known as Gavia Emer. What? That sounds like a spell. It does. Well, it's a lot of Latin names that I spelled. <laughs> but yeah, Gavia Immer? Maybe Immer. Maybe Immer. Immer. I don't Gavia know. Gavia Immer! Yeah. Um, but <laughs> for those who don't know, these are large diving water birds with dagger-like beaks known for their moaning call uh, or eerie call. That was an elephant. <laughs> that was just like a celebratory little horn. Not a, not a loon call. And I gotta say, Maggie's like pretty spot on usually with her claws. That, not at all. No. Um, so I'm doing the common yeah. loon, but there are actually five species of loon. I was gonna ask. Do you okay. know them? No. <laughs> Do you want to guess? Um, I'm gonna, there's gotta be like a ring necked of something, right? Nothing neck related. Is there a ring? Nothing ring related. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, is there one that's like got some red in it? Red? Throated. Okay. Yes. Um, how about like a black cheeked? How about a yellow build? Okay. <laughs> you just got to pick a color, pick a body part. I mean, and like nine out of 10, you might have something. If you're doing warblers, hundred percent, you're going to hit a warbler. <laughs> Legit. Um, you want to take any other guesses? So we've got red throated, yellow build. No. Okay. Uh, common Pacific. Oh. An Arctic. Oh, there's an Arctic loon. There's an Arctic loon. Who wow. knew? Okay. Now you. Um, so I described a little bit of what they look like, but if you've never seen a loon, they are larger than a mallard. So like normal duck. I feel like most people know mallard as their like go-to duck. Right. You know? Uh, but they're smaller than a Canada goose. So they're between 88 and 215 ounces. Usually I would convert that into pounds, but this time I didn't. <laughs> so. How many ounces? Big duck. 
Uh, between 88 and 215. Well, 16 ounces is in a pound. Okay. So you said 88? Yeah. I'm not good at math. I'm going to say that's somewhere around eight pounds. Sure. Five to eight. Well, eight would be at the low end. Anyway, you want to do the math? You said 88? My dad's going to be and so angry at me. And the top is 215. The cap. 215? Is the big one. That's a big discrepancy. 80. What can I say? Okay, I started at five, yeah. didn't I? 88 is five. Well, you started at five. eight and then you said five to eight. Five to eight, yeah, because I was okay. like, eight is way too much for 88. That was uh, 215. So they start at 5.5 pounds. Okay. And they get up to 13. Dang. Okay. Um, but yeah, so they're uh, big birds. I All wrote, birds. breeding adults are gorgeous. So again, like I mentioned, I have a loon sweatshirt on. Yeah, just look um, at that. And I love loons. I think they're beautiful. I think they're so cool. So obviously I would describe them as gorgeous, but they really are. They have this really sleek black head and bill that, like I said, is very dagger-like, very yeah. sharp. Yeah. Um, they have this black and white spotted back and then a black and white vertical striped neck and then red eyes, but not creepy. I also put that. <laughs> they're not creepy they're not, red eyes. They're like more of like a, like maroon, like a bright maroon. And even then, yeah, I mean, because you don't expect to see an animal with a red pupil. Yeah. Or a red... But apparently, I... the red eyes help them locate prey underwater. I'm not surprised. Right? Low light, red. That seems appropriate. Right. Uh, so where can you find them? Uh, so you can find <laughs> Lake Erie in the winter. Um, so you can find them in freshwater lakes in northern U.S. and Canada during the breeding season, which is summer. They do have a winter migration, and then during the winter migration, they're usually found along the coasts in large numbers. But they may pause uh, their migration hang out on the Great Lakes as well. Cool. Does their range overlap with any of the other species? I do not know. Oh. I would say probably. Okay. At some point. When they're migrating, it's like all the way down the coast. So I'm assuming... Really? Yeah. Wow. I don't know how far down, but like... I'm I've never seen a loon south of... South of Maine. Well, now you're making me question that. So when they're, they're all over the place and travel around, who are they with? So they're usually solitary when they're feeding, uh, but they may gather in loose flocks at night. What bird travels solo? <laughs> Loons, because they like to be a loon? There's some joke in there. There's gotta <laughs> Is be, there? There's got to be a joke. There's, I feel so a loon sometimes. Um, during the breeding season, though, they are monogamous. Females uh, will usually lay two eggs, and both sexes will incubate the eggs for 24 to 31 days. Good job, dads. Right? The females do tend to incubate a little bit more, but hey, dads there. We'll take it. Mm -hmm. uh, the young leave the nest after one to two days and can swim underwater Whoa. only after two to three days. One to two days. Um, both parents tend to the young and feed them, uh, and sometimes... The young will ride on the parents' back. Mm. Um, and they can fly 10 to 11 weeks after hatching, which is wild that they can swim so quickly, but then weeks later, they finally can fly. Well, loons are not great. They're not great. That's not, not great flyers. That's not their, like, number one priority. Like, I'm sure you're going to get into their flying habits mm. in a bit. A little bit. <laughs> okay. But so what are they doing? What are, what are loons <laughs> doing? I don't know why... Put it like this. Being so, birds. Lots of foraging. Uh, they forage by diving and swimming underwater, propelled by their back feet, looking for small fish, minnows, suckers, perch, gizzard, shad, rock cod, and killifish, um, which they'll eat underwater. But if they get larger things, they'll bring them to the surface to eat, like crustaceans and frogs. Very good. Cool. Eat frogs. Um, when we were in Maine, we saw one that was like eating a little lobster. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. It was, it was really, it was also like a very young loon it looked like and was like Probably regretted that. It was like I don't but I don't think you're winning this fight trying to get this lobster But down. like they will like you said they will eat crustaceans but it was probably yeah, just a Yeah, it looked like it was it, it, juvenile trying it out. Its eyes are too big for its stomach. So they're swimming foraging. Um, so loons actually have solid bones, which make them better at maneuvering through the water. So Wow, that's, that helps them be better swimmers. Yeah. Um, but that's fascinating because fish, fish bones aren't that heavy, are they? Well, fish are built to be underwater. Birds were originally built to not be underwater. Were they? <laughs> no, but I'm thinking so, like, of most like... most birds have hollow bones. Exactly, yeah. 
But like... But everything else has normal bones. <laughs> Why does this feel so unique? It's, it's unique for Loon. For <laughs> <laughs> Argus is over. I don't know what I'm getting at. I, I just, I don't think... Fish, fish bones are so... I don't know. I'm thinking of... Fish a, bones are light, but they are still solid bones. Okay. <laughs> I like, get your question, but I feel like you were missing the point. I'm just, I'm in awe. I mean, they're not rock bones. They're not <laughs> sinking to the bottom of the They don't have cement in their sleeves? <laughs> no, no cement in these sleeves. Okay. All right, fine. Anyway, uh, and they can stay underwater for up to five minutes. Mm. So when they're courting each other, mm. um, these monogamous pairs, uh, when in uh, courtship displays, pairs dip bills into the water rapidly. <gasps> and by rapidly, I mean repeatedly. But I'm guessing it's pretty fast. <laughs> They rear up to a vertical position with wings partly spread, race side by side across the surface of the water. And they're like, oh, what a good dance. You want to have some babies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you want to lay some eggs. <laughs> obviously. So building a nest. Uh, that's something else that they're doing. Um, but they're building their nest. Both sexes participate in nest building. And they build their nests uh, near the water on shore, hidden by vegetation. And the reason that they're building their nests so close to the shore, whereas a lot of other seabirds will build their nests on rocks or things mm -hmm. like that, or up on, you know, up away from the water, is because these guys uh, can barely walk on land. Right. They're, they're just... They're not designed for land. Not at all. So their legs are actually set too far back on their bodies, which mm -hmm. helps them to dive better, why they're such great swimmers and divers. But it makes it really, really awkward to, to walk. You know what else it doesn't help with? What? Flying. Okay, well, here's the thing. They can reach speeds up to 70 miles per hour. Taking off, I should but say. But I was going to say, they always have to take off from water. They can't take off from land. Right. So they need like a big runway of water mm -hmm. in order to, to take off. They're like an aquaplane. Airborne. Exactly what I was <laughs> going to say. Um, but one thing I learned, so... Um, if you follow me on Instagram or on TikTok, which no one probably here does, but maybe you do. Um, I went to bird camp this summer that Maggie is one of the co-directors of. And in learning about loons, which I already loved loons, but then I got to learn more about loons and sea loons and hear loons. And it was beautiful. They told us, I forgot who told us, that one issue that loons are facing is when they're flying, they'll go to land in what they think is a lake or something because they see a reflection, but it turns out to just be a parking lot. Mm -hmm. Big empty vast of it's asphalt terrible. that reflects light, but it looks like a lake and they'll land. And because they cannot take off from land, they're stuck, they're stuck which is so sad. And they're finding more and more loons. Like luckily people are helping them out and, you know, calling like animal control or like mm -hmm. wildlife places, but they get stuck in parking lots. It's so sad. It's, it's like the song. Paved paradise. Put up a parking lot. <laughs> a loon wrote that. Did you know? <laughs> <laughs> a loon wrote that. So they are back to this flying thing. So they can fly pretty well. It's the takeoff oh. that is the most problematic. Now vocalizing. Like I said in the beginning, they're eerie. They're known for their call. And if you haven't heard a loon call, maybe I'll sneak one in. They're just so gorgeous and like haunting, but like so calming. Um, but they also have multiple kinds of calls. So the most common ones are a tremolo, the yodel, the whale, and the hoot. And they all have different purposes. The tremolo, spelled T-R-E-M-O-L-O, -O, is the laughing call communicating its presence to other loons. Okay. I thought you were going to try to do it. I was going to try. I don't think you should. Are you kid? <laughs> <laughs> no, go for it. I'm supportive. That's the like laughing call. Oh, like that. Yeah, but like loud, much louder. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll boost the audio so just that loud. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the yodel, which is a long and complex uh, call made by males to establish and maintain territory. Wait, wait I don't know that. Okay, keep going. Uh, the whale, a long call consisting of three notes and communicates location to other loons. So I think that's the one. That's, that's the one that's we like know. The, that you know you're the at eerie. night and you hear it. Or kind yeah. of, but like higher pitch. Yeah, that's pretty good though. 
Shit, that was good. Oh, was that good? I think that was good. <laughs> you know, I'm not even going to try because it was going to be embarrassing before, but like now it's going to be really embarrassing. I couldn't do it again. That was good. Uh, and then the last one is a hoot. Short and soft, usually used in family groups. Sure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm guessing. Um, uh, what if it's just hoot? Hoot. <laughs> Very human sounding. <laughs> hoot. Make sure you pronunciate the two. Pronunciate. Enunciate. <laughs> That was more for me than anyone else. Um, <laughs> Pronounce. Okay. But, so, that's loons. How are they doing? So, um, they don't have, I guess, generally speaking. Common loons, right? Yeah. Common loons. Uh, they have few predators uh, of adults. Sea otters and large raptors will prey on them. However, eggs and chicks are eaten by raccoons, ravens, bald eagles, mink skulls, crows, snapping turtles, skunks, foxes, northern pike, and muskies. But that's really just... Um, What's a muskie? I think muskrat, maybe? Didn't you say muskrat earlier? No. Okay. I said mink. But that's just that's just food chain. That's just Yeah. What's that's normal. Circle of life. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> but their populations are overall stable. They have disappeared from some of their former nesting areas because of human disturbances on like during the summer. Makes sense. More people more people recreating on lakes. Yeah. We're going to make sure we're sharing that. Coexisting. Yeah, baby. Um, and then uh, acid rain reduces their food supplies. Um, and then, of course, climate change. Uh, because uh, of climate change. They're climate change. They're projected to lose much of its breeding range due to warming. So they, there's lots of loons already up in Canada, but the ones that are in um, the United States are primarily breed in the northern areas like Maine. And as it warms, they'll keep moving up to Canada, which Canada's great. But I can't have all the loons. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, Canada. Oh, Canada. Um, oh, and that's loons. Just a reminder, though we are animal enthusiasts, we're not scientists. We've never claimed to be. Um, do your research. We just want you to get excited about animals like we are. Thank you for joining us on this episode. If you like our podcast, make sure you subscribe wherever you are listening and leave us a review. It'll help us reach more animal enthusiasts like you. You can find us. You can also find us on Instagram at the Water and Hole Pod on YouTube at the Water and Hole Pod, and you can visit our website, thewateringholepod.com. I have to burp. Tune in next time when we learn more. We do learn more. We, we will. Do. We will learn more. Tune in next time when we learn about more animals, their biology and habitat, the threats they face, and what people are doing about it.